The, among the other means is uh, fake modesty. You know, sister, uh, that is not hijab. That looks like a fashion show. Okay? I'm not talking to any sister now. I'm just saying, you'll see sisters wearing some, some, some clothing which is supposed to be hijab. Supposed to be. But it is not, not in the deen of Allah at least. Not according to the ayah, Not according to this standard. Not according to these standards. Hijab that is really not hijab. And so when the sister is advised, preferably, preferably by other sisters, she says, you know, my modesty is in my heart. My heart is pure. My heart is white like snow. It's all good there. So it, what I wear doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I wear. It doesn't matter whether I cover my hair or not, cover my body or not. This is, you're being too, you know, strict and you really don't understand Islam. I love Allah. I love the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We say that's very nice. But you have the wrong idea. If that were the case, then what, why would the Sahabiyat, why would the wives of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and the, the Muslim women, the Muhajirat, and from the Ansar, why when the ayat of hijab came down, they didn't even wait, they cut parts of their apron, part of their outer garment to cover themselves with it. And we're not dealing with covering the face or uncovering the face. This is the difference of opinion among the scholars. We're not trying to speak about niqab now. We're just speaking about standard hijab, where your hair is covered, your ears are covered, your neck is covered, your chest is covered, and the rest of your body is covered. Not covered by any garment, covered by a garment which makes you unattractive, which doesn't show your body form. Otherwise, we have a hadith which says that among the women whom the Prophet ﷺ did not see during his time is Nisa'un, Kasiyatun, Ariyatun, Ma'ilatun, Mumilatun. They're women who are dressed yet naked. They are deviant. They are going astray and they are leading others astray. They are tempted and they are tempting others. And they, their head, their hairstyle is like, you know, the camel hump. They shall not enter Jannah nor even smell its fragrance, even though its fragrance can be smelled from such and such distance. This is what we see today. This is a manifestation of the hadith and the prophecy of the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 1400 years ago. We see it today. You tell the sister, yeah, sister, fear Allah with hijab. Says, modesty, you know, I have modesty in my heart. If the heart was sound, the body would have become sound. They are, they, there's a harmony between them. There's domino effect. One cannot happen without the other. You could look modest outwardly and have a corrupt heart, but you cannot possibly have a sound heart and not be modest outwardly. It works one way without the other. So, you know, this is the uh, piece of advice for the ladies. Don't get upset with me and don't make dua, you know, against the speaker who reminded you of the obligations. I know it's tough. People don't like to be reminded of things that they're trying to keep doing. But then I will be a fake individual. I won't be sincere to my brothers and sisters. And we will just be trying to, you know, pat each other's back. Everything is okay, brother. No problem. But that's not how the Muslimin are. وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرَ Until the end of the ayah. Believing, when, believing men and believing women are allies. They're protectors of one another. They enjoin what is good, forbid what is evil. Not to make life difficult for people, but to seek Allah's pleasure. That's the obligation of the Rusul. Otherwise, the Rusul would have never told the people about Jahannam. They would have only told them about Jannah. But the first thing the Prophet ﷺ did was what? When he was told, فَصْدَ بِمَا تُؤْمَرْ Proclaim what you have been commanded. What did he do? He gathered all the tribes. And he said, I warn you of the hellfire. The first thing the da'wah began with was warning the people against Jahannam. Then the other things. So you can't be saying, don't scare the people about Jahannam, speak about Jannah only. This is not the way of Allah, nor the way of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.
You read the Quran. Allah will describe the people of Jannah, then the people of Jahannam. Or the people of Jahannam, then the people of Jannah. Targheeb and Targheeb. Encouraging the people and scaring the people. So we have to follow the same methodology in our da'wah as well. Sometimes it's scary, but that's life.